Okay, are you guys seeing my uh, spider screen? Okay. All right, what we have planned for this evening is a couple of simple things here. Let's see, get to my notes. Okay, so you have tonight analyze the most active hour, and then on Wednesday, you have calculate the heart rate, and you'll use something called peak find, and I'll show that today to give you some hints on that, that particular exercise. Um, okay, I think tonight I will see if anybody has a question first. Uh, Victoria, you said you might have a question. Do you mind uh, sharing what you got? And then we'll talk about that, see if that'll give people some hints. Yeah, I'll share my screen. Thank you. I'll stop sharing. <clears throat> okay, what I was kind of confused on is, are we, I know in office hours, um, you gave us a hint and you showed us like this hours collected. Mm -hmm. Are we supposed to use that for our part yep. because I know it was like giving me different um, plots for the standard deviation than the ones that you had, at least for the third assignment. I think I went through uh, 163 and you are going six to 100, it looks like. So my files were different. So you would expect maybe the standard deviation to be different slightly. You with me? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. That that makes sense. So, what did did I ask for specific uh, numbers for this? Which files did I ask for? Let's go back. I'll look. Oh, I asked for six to one hundred. That's so tricky of me to do that, right? So I gave you six to one sixty three, and I believe that you are correct. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, thank you. Well, let's talk through your code a little bit. Let's share a little bit with everybody. And if you wouldn't mind kind of talking through what you did. Wait, just sorry, I didn't hear you. Just so like, you, you want me to just, explain it? Yeah, just kind of talk through your code. Okay, um, so then we have the function read data files from the one that we made before. And then the file prefix, file suffix, and then all the inputs, and then the list for hours um, that the data was collected. And then I call the function. And then line 68 is where um, I converted the time to a readable time so that we can use it in our loop. Um, and then for the PPG STD um, that creates the um, array for the data. And then I have the this variable high S uh, standard deviation started at zero. And then I create a list um, for the most active hour. And then the, this for loop um, appears just for assignment two. Um, but then I included this if statement for assignment three where if the standard deviation that it reaches is greater than the standard deviation before, it'll create like a list of the most active hours for the variable M. And then it assigns it the- It create a list, right? It just stores it in that value. It's only oh yeah, it stores it in as that variable, yes. Okay. And then okay. the high STD um, is then assigned to the one that was the highest that it like was iterating through. And then um, this part just takes care of the values of the data that are like zero or aren't usable in our for loop or in our if statement. And then, then this is for assignment two, but the histogram for assignment three is down here. Oh, let's see your histogram. Oh, okay. Like you have it, I can see it on the right there. That looks right. 
So you put the bins in there, range sixteen hundred to twenty four hundred. Yes, like and I was gonna ask, is that something that we can do? Because I know when I didn't have this range, it would take it to the greater. Yeah, number. you have to you have to do that for this one because it looks odd if you don't. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hey, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah. Okay. Any comments? Need anybody not get that? Let's go up to your line 94. I think that could be even faster. I'm curious now that you have time in there, if we use NumPy square, because it's taken to the 0 0.5 power instead of using NumPy square, taking the square root of all of the squares. Is there a NumPy square root? I bet there is. I'm not sure. Good luck. Do you know what I'm saying? Or, or am I speaking a different language? <laughs> no, I, I get what you're saying, because you're just saying if we could use the num, um, the numpy square root instead of taking it yeah, to the power. exactly. So I'm looking right now to see if there's a square root. I think that would be faster. So I had that error in my code. Let's see. Not really an error. It's just an observation that it could be. Oh yeah, SQRT makes sense. So maybe that could, yeah, there you go. Take that. So I wonder if that's faster. There's a lot of stuff we're taking the square root of. Did you do a time end? Oh yeah, let, let's see. Most active, uh, execution time for 1.71 seconds. I didn't see what? it. The one before was 1.51, um, but when I was running it earlier, it was around like 2.1, 2.3. So it's definitely faster than earlier. A little faster. Okay. Got to use NumPy when we can, right? Make it faster. Okay. That's really good. Um, let's see. Let me get control back. Thank you so much, Victoria. Appreciate that. And I'm going to share a couple of things today of other things that we need to talk about. Okay, so you just covered this guy. And let's go back modules and make sure you guys are aware of what needs to be handed in. All right. Project one. So we just covered that. There is a how to calculate beats per minute some information on that and then you for your next assignment assignment four you're going to calculate the heart rate okay so let's let's take a look at that i've got some code that i can show you for that um before we do that i'm going to do something called peak fit exercise and this is just a little code that i've written that um, takes in one file. We read in the one file using pandas read underscore CSV. We do all the things that we've been doing. I plot, and this time I'm going to plot infrared left. I plot the infrared, so I take the IR, and then I get the X value, which is the accelerometer data. And then I do just what you did. You calculate the, the magnitude, which I, did, I didn't use NumPy here, so forgive me. I didn't do it the fastest way. I did the calculation there. And then I did this little trick where I normalized, but I multiplied by this 200,000. I'll show you why I did that in just a minute. Now, here's the, here's the thing. So we're going to use this function called peak, peak find peaks. Okay, I think you guys can load that in. It has all of these parameters. What is it for height, threshold, prominence, width, and so forth. And you will have to um, look at the help for that and search online. And the, the module for that is SciPy signal. And then there's a function called find peaks. And what it does is find the peaks within uh, our heart rate signal, our PPG signal, right? 
And the height here is defined as must be above a, a specific y-axis threshold and vertical vertical distance to neighboring samples. So if you have a sample that you just acquired, what is um, the, the um, basically the height, the vertical distance from the previous sample? And then there's this thing called prominence, which turns out to be pretty important, which is the height above the surrounding baseline. So it's not just the previous sample, it takes a baseline value, a previous value. So this is a pretty complex function, this fine peaks, okay? So I encourage you to look at that because you'll need it to be able to calculate the heart rate. So I created a little code here where I could, I could play around with all these variables, run the code, and then plot the results. So don't look at the red line right now. Just look at this line here. So I found the peaks and I found the troughs. And I put on the peaks, I put an orange dot. And on the squares or on the troughs, I put a green star. All right, are you guys all seeing this? Okay, thanks, Victoria. All right, so let's let's think about this for a little bit. So, so notice that the average intensity value here is two hundred thirty thousand counts. Okay, so this peak. So how did I find the peaks? Is I just put the signal in there and I put IR in the IR signal, which is just the data frame and the column of the infrared left signal. Okay, that's all I did. Now, how do I figure out the troughs? All right, here's the little technique. It's like, well, a trough is actually a peak, but we need to invert the signal, right? Ah, that's kind of, that's kind of, think about that for a second. If I want to find the trough, I need to invert the signal. And I can't just, and I basically subtracted the mean. I took IR minus the mean, so it kind of is around, it converts it to a zero mean, and then I invert the signal. Now I can find the troughs, right? And all we want to do to find the troughs is find the index value, the X value in time. So that's what the troughs is, is really the index value. Sorry, the troughs here is the inverted signal right there. We find it in, we pass it in to find peaks and it returns the index value. All right, it's kind of tricky. So I'm just making sure everybody gets that. I'll stop there and see if anybody has a question. Does this equation make sense to you guys, what I did? Now, when I go off and plot the data, what I passed to line 41 here was I passed the troughs, trough index, which is the X values. And then I said, give me only the infrared values at those indexes. Do you guys see that? And then put a star there. So that is what I passed to the plot to be able to put the star on the troughs. Make any sense? Okay, the other thing that I'm trying to show here is that this is the magnitude of the acceleration. And notice that once the magnitude starts getting wonky, that we don't we, we don't collect, we don't get a good PPG signal. And hence we don't get a good um, heart rate signal. We start losing the heart rate right in there. So our algorithm, what we're eventually gonna do is we're gonna look for these spikes and say around these spikes, don't collect the heart rate. But if we're below a certain threshold, like right here, we can calculate the heart rate. And we've come up with kind of an arbitrary value is that if the magnitude deviates by 20% or 10% to 20, right in there. So those, we might even throw out the data because of those. 
definitely would throw out the data in here. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so that's a little bit about how troughs work. Now, I, I multiplied my magnitude by 200,000 because it's basically uh, divided by the mean, so it makes everything around one, and then I multiplied by 200,000 so I could compare it head to head, whoops, head to head with my peaks and troughs data. Make sense? All right, pretty clever. All right, so that's some hints for the homework tonight. And then how do you, what's the equation for heart rate? Let's see, that's, that's pretty straightforward, right? If I have 100 samples a second, you need to know the samples per second to be able to calculate the heart rate. And you find the peaks first, we can have to estimate if we find the peaks first, let's go from 200 to 400. This one's about 250, this one's about 70, or maybe 70, 75. So it's 75 samples is one cycle. So if it was 100 samples, we'd know that the heart, that the beats per minute was 60 beats per minute, right? 100 samples in one in one second. If the cycle is that long, it's shorter. So it has to be longer than 60 beats per minute. Make sense, guys? I actually did the calculation over here. Here it is, right here. Here's the equation. Beats per minute is one over the, the beats what I call it the beats distance. And you have to know that the sampling rate, which is 100 samples a second, times 60 seconds in one minute. So that gives the values in beats per minute. I don't think I've shown you this test, this code here yet. Let's run this one and see if this one runs. I run this. Now notice here, I've calculated the beats per minute for all the data files. Let's see, where did I do that? From, I would want started at seven and ended at nine. Okay, and so called my function called read and calculate heart rate. So I pa pass in the signal type, pass in the file name, it reads the data, extracts the channel with the optical signal, finds the peaks, find the peak indexes. Then I calculate the distance between the peaks. Now, how did I do that? I took peak index one minus peak index zero, but did that for the whole array. Found the mean of that. And then I use that as my mean beats distance. Bam, that's pretty cool. Mean beats distance. Use the equation here for beats per minute and you got it. All right, I will stop there, and that gives you a lot of hints for the next two homeworks, okay? Alyssa, any questions? No, I'm good. Good. Victoria, you okay? Yes, I think I'm good. Okay, well, I'll stop recording. I'll post this if you guys want to take a look at it. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday on six, at 6 p.m. to see if there's any questions, okay? Thank you. All right, take care.